Hi everyone. So in this lecture, we're just going to talk about properties of real numbers. Some of these we've already encountered and I've a actually have described to you, but let's just kind of formally go through these. This, uh, this will be a fairly short lecture, but I just want to make sure that some of these properties are, are clear and what rules you're basically allowed to use. Okay, so one property that's quite common is the commutative property. So the commutative property for addition, this is just saying that a plus b is the same as b plus a. Okay, so the order, um, uh, changing the order of the numbers doesn't change the result. Okay, it's just saying that these are going to be the same thing. All right, same thing goes with multiplication. So if you have a times b, or just a times b like this, that's the same thing as um, b times a. You know what? Let me uh, not overcomplicate this. <laughs> okay, let's just write it like uh, um, a times b is the same as b times a. Okay, so in other words, just kind of like to sum up what these two properties are kind of saying, they're just saying changing the order, changing order does not change the uh, result. Okay, but you got to be careful. That's only true for addition and multiplication. You don't have a commutative property for things like um, uh, subtraction. Okay, their order is significant. A minus B is not the same as B minus A. Okay, um, in general. So you have commutative property for addition and multiplication. Associated property. This one is. Um, uh, I mean, it it comes up, but it's it's kind of the property that you don't think about a lot of times. So this is this is the property a plus b plus c is the same as a plus b plus c. So if you moved these parentheses around, you're getting the same result. So changing the grouping of the numbers doesn't essentially change. It doesn't change the result. Same thing goes with multiplication. And I have said this before. So a times b times c is the same as a times b times c. So just Associated property, you kind of use it without actually thinking about it most of the time. Now, distributed property, this one is quite important because it combines uh, two uh, two operations together. So you're kind of it's a property involving both multiplication and addition, and this is very important. So if I have a times the expression b plus c, what we want to do, and we have used this before, you're going to multiply a by each of these terms in the expression. So you have a times b plus a times c. Okay, so multiplication distributes over addition. That's what that means. Multiplication distributes over the addition property. Okay, now even if this is a subtraction, you can still have the distributive property, but just, um, yeah, this is just what it looks like. Okay, so special numbers that have unique properties for real numbers, well, that's 0 and uh, 1. Okay, these both have significant properties. So 0 is significant because it's what's called the additive identity. So additive identity property, that just means that if I took a real number and I added it to 0, well, we all know that you're just going to get that real number back. A plus 0 is A. And multiplication, multiplicative identity, well, that's we're talking about 1 there. So if I took a real number and I multiplied by 1, then I'm getting back my a, all right? And uh, we have an additive inverse property. That just says that for every real number, we can add it to its negative, and we will get the additive identity 0, right? If I take a and I add it to negative a, like 3 plus negative 3, that's going to get me 0. And similarly, we have a multiplicative inverse property, which is if I have a real number um, that's non-zero, so let a uh, be a non-zero, okay? Then a times 1 over a is 1, right? The reciprocal, uh, if I multiply it, I'm going to get 1 back. It's uh, the multiplicative inverse, all right? So kind of getting a little bit of an overview, let's kind of state which property justifies these given statements. So uh, 3 times y equals y times 3. Well, that's the commutative property. It's commutative property for multiplication, but we'll just say commutative property, just shorten this. Okay, x plus 7 plus 9 is the same as x plus 7 plus 9. So right here, we're just moving the parentheses. This is the associative property. b plus 0 plus 3 is the same as just b plus 3. So here, we're just simplifying this parenthesis here, the b plus 0 into b. Well, that's just the additive identity property, additive 
identity. Okay, uh, two times z plus uh, times two times z times five. You're just moving the parentheses here. Uh, oh wait, no, 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 we're not. We're, look, we're swapping the z and the five there. So what property are we using there? We're interchanging the five and the z. That's again like this commutative property. Okay, so right there, we're not moving any parentheses. We're just kind of swapping z and five. That's the commutative property. Negative two times. Uh, negative 1 over 2 equaling 1, that's the multiplicative inverse property. In other words, these are inverses of each other. They, they multiply and give us the uh, multiplicative identity. Negative 2 plus 2 equals 0, that's the additive inverse. And here, one of the most important properties, look at this, negative 6 times the expression y plus 2. We're distributing that negative 6 to give us negative 6y. Um, um, oh, that's actually a typo. Look, uh, this should, what should we get? We should actually get negative 12, right? Right, because negative 6 times 2 will give us negative 12, actually. Okay, so that should be a negative. Okay. Well, that is the distributive property.